Karen used essential oils plus healing crystals. It's not very effective. No, I don't imagine it would be. Hey guys, and welcome to Voicey here. Happy birthday if today is your birthday. And we've got a great show for you today with some crazy entitled parents, so buckle up. Don't forget, Voicey veterans, to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode. This story is called, I was in a coma for six years, and I was able to hear every single thing my entitled mother said about me. I moved into a small but lovely house with my parents when I was 10. Though the house was small, it had a nice backyard with a tree. My father did his best to improve the house and the backyard and always tried to make us happy. He works six days a week in a construction company and we live on his job. He is the loveliest, most caring father ever. My entitled mum, however, never worked. She would sit all day on TV, smoking and drinking, which resulted in a lot of arguments between my parents. I hated these arguments and always ran away. My father built me a nice treehouse to play in and stay away from trouble. He then bought me a beautiful puppy who became my best friend and would always play with in the treehouse. Now this all happened in a span of three years, so I was about 13. On to the story. One night, the argument really heated and my EM was screaming saying that dad should get another job as he isn't buying her expensive stuff like all of her friends husbands do. It was a mess. So I sneaked out of the house with my puppy and went up the treehouse but I must have slipped because the next thing I know, I was on the ground with immense pain and I can't move while my dog was barking non-stop. I regained my consciousness in the hospital and heard the doctor saying I was in a coma. I was so confused as I was clearly conscious but wasn't able to open my eyes or move at all. My dad was talking to the doctor regarding my health while EM was talking with the nurse about the prices. Her freaking daughter was in the hospital in a coma and all she cared about was the price. I was transferred back home with a special device for my respiratory which was huge, important for later. It was so terrifying and sad that they are right there feeling terrible but you can't reach them. Anyways, my father used to come to me every day and start telling me about his day. It was the only entertainment I had in this state. Then he would start turning me over and rubbing my hands and feet for blood circulation. Then he would leave. EM always thought my dad was being ridiculous, talking to a lifeless body. My puppy never left my side, as if he knew I was conscious. I started hearing arguments every night while my dog was beside me. But once I was able to slightly squeeze my eyelids, which my dog noticed and he started barking rapidly and loudly, my father rushed in but didn't notice anything. But my dog stayed barking all night. At about midnight, my EM came into my room while my dog is still barking and took him away. I never heard him again. After a year, there was an argument about me. My EM said, How long are we going to keep this lifeless body around? To which my dad responds, until she dies. But sadly the argument ended with mum winning and my dad had to move me into a smaller room in the house because I was taking up too much space in my EM's eyes. Now I was moved into a very small room, barely enough to fit my bed, equipment and room for one person to get in. And it was right next to the living room. So now I can easily hear the chats and fights and it was starting to hurt my ears. Fast forward another year and my EM had friends over and she was bragging about meeting this wealthy businessman at the bar and how she will leave my dad and whatnot. I was livid, but literally couldn't do anything. So two days later, she left my dad, saying he was a lazy husband and never satisfied her in anything. And she left. My dad was heartbroken. So was I. My father is the most hardworking person I know. A few months later of peace and quiet, my father decided to take me to a nursing home. He cried over me saying he can't see me like this and that it breaks his heart. So there I was for the next four years in a nursing home with only a person coming to my room twice a day for blood circulation. I entertained myself by creating my own life in my mind, which by the way turned out to be healing the damaged brain cells to the point that I can't differentiate between make-believe and reality. But I knew what my EM did was totally real. One day I heard a familiar voice. It was my dad. He came to me and started talking to me again. I was beyond happy. He said, I can't believe you're finally 19 today. I missed you so much. I couldn't let you see me in this terrible heartbroken state. At that point I knew I couldn't stay like this any longer. I was hurting my dad. So I tried as hard as I can. 
and I actually opened my eyes. When my father noticed, he freaked out and called a doctor. They performed some tests and said that my brain cells have healed, but it would be a while before I could walk and talk again. The news heard about my story and did a few interviews with me. And who do I see five days later? My entitled mum. She came back because of the fame. My father tried to kick her out, but she said I should decide. I, of course, said a big fat no in sign language. She didn't know that I heard everything. But I wasn't done there. I told the news about how terrible my EM was, and she got a lot of hate both in real life and in social media. I also found out she left her wealthy businessman for the fame, and now she is all alone. No house, no money, and no work experience. Sweet, sweet karma. Okay, now as you probably know, I don't say on this channel if I think a story is true or fake. I read entertaining stories and I think you guys are smart enough to think if it's true or false and I don't want to sway you one way or another because you might have had something that happened that's very similar to you and you wouldn't want somebody saying your story is fake. So you know, for this one I'm still not going to say whether it's fake or true but you can probably tell by my tone how I feel about this story. <laughs> I don't normally, I'm not normally as self-aware as this but uh, yeah. And part of the reason I don't like to say if it's true or fake is because I've had some crazy things happen to me from some family members and you would think it's fake. Like you would just straight up think it's fake and that's why I don't tell the stories. And I'm sure you've had things happen to you that if you told the most extreme things that happened in your life, people would be like, nah, and you're like, yeah, that's what I've had to deal with. This story is called EM and Daughter Want a Refund on Phone. This is when I first started out at Walmart back in 2014 in the electronics counter. It was near nighttime and the photo center was closed. It was only me at the stand while others were on break, somewhere in the store or at lunch. Plus business was slow, so it was fine when I was by myself. But oh boy was I wrong. It was about 15 minutes that passed when a teenager, the entitled daughter of our story, came up to the counter and placed a cell phone and the box on the counter while I was helping a father, who will be my hero in this story and you will see why later. I asked the father if he will be alright by himself while I helped another customer and he was fine with it, browsing the children movie section. I was about to ask how can I help her, but she just held her hand up at me. I remember this very well when she did that. I want a refund for this darn phone. It doesn't work with the plan I have. I looked at the phone and it was the Walmart plan we run with T-Mobile. It's usually not the greatest, but it's a good start on a cell phone plan before switching to the bigger ones. And when I looked at the receipt, I already knew this was going to be a handful. To those that don't know, all electronics items can be refunded, but you have to return it within 15 days to get it, especially when it's cell phones. Other items are usually 30 or 90 days depending on the department. And when I looked at the receipt, it was way past the 15 day policy, so I couldn't return it. I'm sorry man, but I can't refund this. It's past the 15 day return policy. Oh boy, did entitled daughter not like that. What do you mean? My mom and I were here a few days ago when we got the darn thing. I'm sorry, but I can't. I'm looking at the receipt on the day you purchased this cell phone and it's way past our policy. I'm sorry, but there's nothing that I can do. ED lets out a growl and huffed before storming away with the cell phone and receipt. I sighed deeply and leaned into the counter. My hero then came with a few movies and saw the whole thing. That's pretty rough to deal with that, huh? I just laughed at that and scanned his items. Oh, you have no idea, sir. This is just my first month here. We both had a good laugh and when I gave him his receipt, I saw the ED once again, and this time with her entitled mother in tow. I knew I was in trouble. Yo, why wouldn't you give my daughter her money back? We brought everything. I understand that, ma'am, but it is past our return policy. Even if I scan it, the serial number wouldn't be in our system no more. EM then yelled at me to get the manager while calling me a few colorful names as well. While I phoned for management, the mother and daughter had a smug grin on their face like they have won. Soon a manager comes by, who was the same manager from my previous story, and asked what was the problem. Yes, your employee was rude to us and won't refund my daughter's cell phone she paid for a few days ago. I want my money now and this C fired. Seriously, who does this over cell phones? But then again, Walmart. Wally World is also crazy people world. Manager looks over at me and I tried to explain what was happening. But EM kept interrupting me while calling me names until manager saw the receipt. 
One look at the date and he knew what was up. Okay ma'am, two things. One, do not cuss at my employee. She is doing her job. And two, you bought this phone a month ago. We can't refund you for the cell phone because the serial number is no longer on the system. ED and EM frowned at that and then starts to cuss at me and manager for not helping them and not letting them have their money back. My hero was watching the whole thing and he stood between us and them. Ma'am, you need to calm down. And you need to control your daughter as well. This is none of your beeswax. And why should I do what you say about my daughter? They're the ones that won't help us. EM points at me and manager. And this was something that I still remember to this day. My hero pulled out his wallet and showed a police badge. He was an off-duty cop. I suggest either you two calm down right now or so help me, I will escort you both out in cuffs. This is no way to act out in public. You need to set a better example for your daughter and you need to control that mouth of yours, kid. EM and ED were dead silent and pale before grabbing the cell phone and the box, then running off. My hero turned over to us and apologized for not stepping in sooner. Manager told him I was fine, but I was still dumbfounded that I was helping an off-duty cop. My hero gave manager his badge number in case those two came back and then thanked me for suggesting a few Disney and DreamWorks movies for his kids. He told me he had a young son and daughter before leaving. Manager asked me if I was okay and I told him I was still baffled that my hero was a cop and I didn't know that. And what was so funny, karma at its finest, that a few days later, the EM and ED did the same thing again but at a different Walmart and they were both arrested for assault on an officer and resisting arrest. My hero was talking to manager while I was on lunch and then told me when I came back. I guess they were lucky there was an undercover cop there, but shouldn't there be security at Walmart? Maybe I don't know my Walmarts very well. I just assumed if there'd be an issue of conflict, you'd be able to call security and be like, hey, these people are bugging us and they refuse to leave. We think they might get violent, let's get them out of here. The fact that they tried the same thing the next day at a different Walmart just shows how dumb these guys were. This story is called, Entitled Aunts Want to Decide Whom I'll Get Married To. OP stands up for himself for the first time. The characters of the story are, OP, I, the all-knowing OP, EA1, Entitled Aunt 1, wife of my mum's oldest brother, EA2, Entitled Aunt 2, wife of my mum's older brother, C1, EA's married daughter, my oldest cousin, mum, my mother, who is too sweet to say anything against anyone to their face. So, a while back, I decided to introduce my girlfriend to my family and start having a mature discussion about me wanting to marry her and seeking their blessing. The challenge was that she was from a different religion. So dead. This was during a long weekend associated with the festival and my extended family had gathered around at my grandmother's place. Things were going well and I'd just pulled into the wedding of my older cousin to the discussion. And soon, the conversation came to where I wanted it to come to. My wedding. Hooray! Boy was I wrong. I wasn't being asked for an opinion there. When it comes to OP's wedding, I think we should all have a say as to whom does he marry. Same woman who informed her about daughters, my first cousin's wedding, just a week before that happened, but wants full control of my wedding. How cute. Yes, he is the only boy on our side. And we have to be 100% involved in his wedding. So it is only fair we get to decide the girl. The place is India, and arranged marriage is still lurking around here. Help! I just peeped at my sister, and she gave me a sympathetic nod, as if to let me know that she understands how horribly all of this is turning out for me. In a while, on the table were names of girls they know that would be a good fit for me and more garbage. So I decided to man up. Actually, I have a girlfriend. I showed them the picture of the girl, and then when they got to know that girl is from a different religion, they lost their crap. My parents were calm, ticked at me doing this without discussing with them first, but calm. So that was a huge relief. My uncles were calm too. They were asking logical questions like, when do I plan to proceed? Do I have enough savings for a wedding and more stuff? But not my aunts. They were wailing and whining about how I was going to ruin the family reputation and how I am ruining the name of my parents. How my aunts would have been ashamed in front of all their family and the rest of the world because I decided to pick my partner. I've always been the nice kid in the family, had zero rebel traits, was always soft spoken. So telling them about my girlfriend itself was a big move from my part. 
The next argument from EA1 was how my mother has raised me wrong and that it has triggered the whole love in me. He is going to set a bad example on the rest of the kids around here. Yes, look at C1. She never fell in love with any man and quietly married the boy we chose for her. She's so happy. C1 is in a bad marriage with zero guts to divorce. She never had any guts to stand up for herself and I'm guessing you can figure out why. My mum cried a bit and that is when I realised that 1. What the heck was I thinking? 2. I need to step up or have all my cousins give up on their dreams because their brother could not stand up for them. EA1 and EA2, you guys practically raised me when I was very young. I know you love me a lot. EA1 now calming down a bit. Yes, we do. I am 25 now. I would be marrying in another two years, and I would probably live to see 65. So how much is that? 40 more years? And 38 years of marriage? I hardly get to see you these days. How many days do we see each other? Five days a year? Let's consider one week? So in the next 40 years of my life, you'd be seeing me for 40 weeks. And you might get to see my partner even less than that. Let's say 20 weeks. That is just 5 months or less. Can't my loving aunts pretend to like my wife for 140 days for me? And all of this, assuming that you'll be alive to see me turn 60, it'd break my heart if you died before I did. The dinner was a very silent affair after that. You know, I wasn't actually expecting that response. I thought it was going to be like, this is my decision and you have to accept it. But he's like, you know what? You don't actually have to accept it. Just pretend. Just pretend for like 140 days in the next 40 years, assuming that you live to be even older than I do, maybe at 65. In a way, that's kind of a generous thing. It's a generous offer. Because ultimately, they're not going to be able to control what it is he does. So, you know, it's a reasonable middle ground. All right, that's all we got time for today. I hope you guys have having a great day today. Drop a like on this video and let me know in the comments what are you guys doing to keep yourself entertained staying at home. Submit your story to be read on the channel at voiceyhearstories at gmail.com and join our Voicey Veteran community at r slash voiceyhear. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode. All right, Voicey Veterans, I'll see you in the next one.